Goro Akechi, Crow, the final member of the Phantom Thieves of Heart, Pancake Boy. Whatever you call him, he's a lot more than he seems. The cast of Persona 5 is extremely well crafted and at times transcend the boundary of fiction and can appear as real people with real problems. From each of the thieves' inner struggles to all of the mementos missions you're sent on, Persona 5 is a game filled to the brim with characterization and I absolutely love it. So why Akechi in particular? Persona 5's characters all deserve their time in the spotlight and all of them have intricacies in characterization and how they relate to their outfits, persona, or the story overall. It's just, I don't think any character is as well done as Akechi. He's introduced as someone who will probably get in your way, and eventually does get in your way. Akechi may operate unjustly, but he's a person before that. Some of my favorite villains fall into this category, from Griffith to Yoshikage Kira, even to Higurashi no Naku Koroni's villain, Mio Takano. <laughs> They're all people before they're villains. And this is something I feel anime tends to get right at least sometimes, but I feel it happens a lot less often in video games. Think about the characters I just listed. Why did I choose Yoshikage Kira instead of Dio Brando, the character that was evil for the sake of being evil? How many of those can you list in video games? Assassin's Creed did this up till Assassin's Creed 3 came along and gave us Haytham Kenway. The Final Fantasy XIII trilogy gave us Caius, who was going in the right path but was still depicted as nothing but a villain. Some of the most iconic villains are even just like Dio, evil to be evil, and that doesn't make them bad, just not exactly what I'm looking for. The thing is, Akechi, who eventually turns into one of Persona 5's main antagonists, at least that's what the story makes you think, is a pretty well-rounded character. I see so many posts criticizing his character growth and development, with reasons ranging from he's a weak plot twist character, to Goro, get in the fucking Persona robot, Ava, Shinji, get in the fucking robot. Well, if you look into Akechi on a baseline level, it isn't quite hard to figure out that he was the traitor to begin with. Surely the pancake scene in a first playthrough may make you go, oh, wow, I missed that. And it might run you for a shock. But if you take apart his character even slightly, you'll realize you were just looking at it on a surface level. His persona is Robin Hood. Robin Hood operated for a force of good on the wrong side of the law. Akechi constantly compares himself to the Phantom Thieves, just with a different sense of justice, which is also his arcana. His code name is Crow. You get a test question about the differences between the crow and bird kanji, noting that the crow kanji is missing something that the bird has, making the crow seem off. Much like Akechi's color scheme feels off with his code name. White and red crows? The only time I've heard of a red crow was in an ancient Chinese legend, which could possibly have something to do with Akechi's character, but let's not get into that right now. His weaknesses and resistances mirror Joker's original Persona Arsene, but you may not remember that if you didn't stick to leveling Arsene up and just got rid of him for Agathion. Robin Hood is weak to curse, while Arsene is weak to bless. And those are all just surface level details. A few other deeper intricacies exist such as Arsene Lupin, the character Arsene is based off of, being a character much like Robin Hood, and a catchy mirroring Joker's stance in battle. Even if you pay attention to the chat conversations, things seem off about his icon placement in the upper part of the screen, it's shifted and a little larger. Akechi also sports weapons that appear unrealistic, such as laser swords and ray guns. Unlike the rest of the Phantom Thieves who use everyday weaponry in their battles. Well, and model guns. Possibly hinting that Akechi is craving for something. Regarding the get in the fucking robot-esque comments, I think a lot of people forget the ages of characters when we consume things. In Shinji's case, outright labeling him as a pussy is extremely dismissive of his internal struggle with love and affection, and the fact that he's only a 14-year-old kid. It's the same for Akechi. He has a deep-rooted internal battle going on, the want to be accepted. I simply won't accept the idea that someone who was abandoned by his father, lost his mother to suicide, and was tossed around as an orphan would create a view of the world that is logical. 
Psychology is an extremely complex thing, and when judging characters with extremely harsh backstories, people are quick to judge them in a negative light. Man, the more that I think about it, Shinji and Akechi really are alike. At least Akechi doesn't have to pilot an Ava. The real problem doesn't end in if Akechi was a poorly written character or not, but rather your experience with him and how you can relate to him. If you don't like his backstory, he's already lost you. If you've never lost something irreplaceable to you, you won't relate to him. If you've never been in a dysfunctional relationship, you won't relate to him. If you have low levels of sympathy or empathy, you definitely won't feel for the guy. It's these questions that you have to ask yourself when confronting a character like this. Not every character is a character everyone will like, but that doesn't mean they're poorly written. The point to take away from all of this is, before anything, Akechi is human, and that's how a truly interesting character is written. All of the major plot points you learn before Akechi's act of treason, including Wakaba and Okumura's deaths, are revealed to you to be at the hands of a human. Not a maniacally laughing scientist working with alien cells. A human character, who you as the player may have grown to like, betrayed you the entire time. Even if you realized it and called it way ahead of time, the truth couldn't be any easier to swallow. After all, if the traitor had been some random dude off the street you never met, it would have made no sense as a mystery. And if it were Shido, it would have been so much easier to figure that out with your encounters with him, as he was shrouded in mystery for some time, and one of your earliest options of replying to him was the classic silenced ellipses. And while you may disagree with Akechi's redemption arc, it's a way to make him appear human. Behind every serial killer, there once was an innocent person who became that evil monster. That's what Persona 5 reminds us of with Akechi. And whether we want to forgive him or not is up to us as a player and our morals and what we believe is right. He doesn't rejoin our party, forcing us to accept him. Wait, are people really complaining about a character being humanized in a game that's core concept is about triggering changes of heart in people to make them realize where they went wrong? Fly.